Diver was a freedom rider. She didn't care if the whole world looked. Joan of Arc with the Lord to guide her. She was a sister who really could. Isadora was the first bar burner. Ain't you glad she showed up? Oh, yeah. And when the country was falling apart, Betsy Ross got it all sold up. And then there's Maud. And then there's Maud. And then there's and then there's Maud And then there's Maud And then there's Maud That uncompromising, enterprising Anything but tranquilizing Right on Maud Hi, Walter Hi, Viv Hi, Maud Oh, hi, Viv Hi I'll be ready to go in just a few minutes Oh, Maud, would you happen to have any Oh Coffee. <laughs> sure, there's some out on the stove. Help yourself. Oh, thank you, Mud. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> thank you, God. <laughs> Boy, Vivian looks really happy. If you were married to Arthur and he was out of town, you'd look happy too. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Templeton. How are you? That's great. Yeah, yeah. No, I have gotten a number of calls on the house, but nothing I'd insult you with. Yeah, but I, I'm sure there'll be a, a lot more calls this afternoon. I don't want you to worry. No. And I'll be sitting right here with my hand on the phone. Yeah. Bye-bye. You ought to sit right here with your hand on the phone. <laughs> oh, come on. Now, Walter, all you have to do is when they call about the house, simply tell them that we're asking $48,000. For the Templeton house on Broadhurst Street? <laughs> That's right. You want me to say you're asking $48,000? American? <laughs> uh, Walter, the Templeton house happens to be in a very expensive neighborhood. The place next door costs two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's a Ramada Inn. Well, <laughs> oh, you should you should see these sales today at Bloomingdale's. I mean, it's like having a license to steal. Vivian. Have you heard from Arthur? He got back from Hartford last night. <laughs> Is he home now? He's getting ready to leave for the hospital. I'll see if I can catch him. Now look, Walter, don't stay too long. Oh! <laughs> Vivian, please don't get too comfortable. We don't want to miss that train to New York. Maud, what do you know about Hartford? Hartford? They have a deer up there that sells life insurance. <laughs> I mean, what is there to know about Hartford? When Arthur got home last night, he, he was a different man. Different in what way? Oh, it was as if he saw me with new eyes. And he, he was so appreciative and, oh, Maudie was so <coughs> romantic. He brought home a bottle of French champagne. That's just not like Arthur. No, it isn't. He probably won it in a raffle somewhere. <laughs> That's what I thought. But he also brought me a beautiful bouquet of roses. Vivian, champagne, roses? And he built a fire and put on his Montavani records and took me in his arms and kissed me and... <laughs> thought he even nibbled on my ear. <laughs> He's never done that before. And then we stayed up all night waiting for the sunrise and then never mind <laughs> you can tell me the rest of the story on the train to hartford apparently there is a lot more going on up there than just a deer selling life insurance <laughs> oh lord i guess i missed arthur he didn't answer the door but i bumped into stu dempsey who was walking by in his jogging suit boy he looked like such a jock please maud buy me one <laughs> Maud, not a word about you-know-what to you-know-who. I know I'm you-know-who. 
but what you know what? <laughs> um, Walter, it's just girl talk. Oh, no, it's not just girl talk. I mean, there is a man involved, too. Oh? Who's that? <laughs> Look, Walter, uh, this is just between Vivian and me. It really doesn't concern you at all. Well, it certainly does. Arthur's his best friend. <laughs> Walter, Arthur came home. Maud! You promised! <laughs> Tell me later. Stu wants me to play golf today, so I thought Mrs. Nogatuck could handle the Templeton calls. Walter, you promised me that you would take the calls on the house for me today. What's wrong with Mrs. Nogatuck? She could use a good laugh. Walter. <laughs> All right, I'll go tell Stu I can't come out and play. <laughs> well, Arthur, why were you ringing the bell? Well, it's not polite to just barge in on a neighbor. How considerate. Hi there. I thought you left for the hospital. Not yet, baby. Well, Wal Wal Walter was just over at our house looking for you. Well, I don't always answer the door. I'm kind of a laid-back guy, you know. <laughs> Besides, I couldn't go without another taste of those luscious lips. Oh, aren't you adorable. <laughs> well, passion knows no bounds when you're with the goddess of love. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> uh, hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Templeton. Yes, yes, I, I have gotten quite a few calls, but they were... They were all bargains. <laughs> yes, I'm, uh, I'm uh, standing pat at uh, 48,000. <laughs> What's that you say? You have good news? Who? Who bought the place next door? <laughs> no. Yes, that, that is good news. Yes, I mean, I mean a Ramada in on one side and our Jack in the Box on the other. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, keep you informed. Um, this might interest you. Bloomingdale's is running a special on chapstick. Oh, sorry, Maud. I guess I got carried away. This little dog drives me nuts. By the way, babe, where's the checkbook? Ah, uh, oh, uh, where, where you always keep it, Arthur? In the broom closet, inside the old vacuum cleaner bag. Of course. What do you want the checkbook for? That's for me to know, and you to find out. <laughs> he really is different. <laughs> I could understand a change in a man if he'd been to Paris or London, Sodom and Gomorrah, Pittsburgh, but Hartford. <laughs> and he was so sad when he left on that trip. Didn't say what was wrong, just that he had a family problem. Well, it looks to me like he solved it. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> you know, Maud, last night was so unusual. Uh, have you ever run barefoot through Cheese Whiz? <laughs> well, so much for the trip to Bloomingdale's. What? Well, you'll have every mouse in New York snapping at your heels. I uh, hear you're back. Yes, cupcake. But uh, shouldn't you be getting to the hospital? Well, I was going to, but to tell you the truth, Viv, I, I just didn't feel like it. I know that trip took a lot out of me. Maybe it was a mistake taking the bus home just to save three bucks. Ah, now that sounds like my old friend, Arthur. Cheap. <laughs> you seem so different all of a sudden. Do I? Yes, of course I do. Look, I just better get this off my chest, Vivian. 
I didn't tell you why I went away to Hartford, because, well, I was ashamed. Ashamed? What? Ashamed of what? I'm afraid there's a skeleton in my family closet. It's my brother Arnold. Your brother? Well, uh, you never told me you had a brother. I know. I've kept it hidden all these years, Vivian. You see, Arnold is, well, he's not wrapped too tight. <laughs> I mean, he's been in and out of institutions most of his adult life. Oh, oh, well, Arthur, I would have understood. Thank you, Viv. Oh. Anyway, Arnold's been up in this place at Hartford, and they were having some trouble with him, and they asked me to come up there. It's funny, you know, I was always the successful one. He tried to compete, but he just couldn't take the pressure. Oh. Anyway, Vivian, as soon as I got to Hartford, they told me he'd escaped. He'd escaped? That's right, and the authorities thought he might be heading this way and try to impersonate me. Oh. I better go to the bank and alert them. Oh. Wait a minute, Arthur. Are you mean the two of you look that much alike? Like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. We're identical twins. That's why I took the first bus back from Hartford this morning. <laughs> Vivian, I hate to say this, but <laughs> I think you were tweedling with Tweedledum. <laughs> oh, come on now, Vivian. Vivian, how were you to know that that, that romantic man who gave you champagne and roses, who, who admired you, who adored you, who showered you with affection, Honey, how were you to know that he was Arthur's crazy brother? <laughs> I wonder why they think he's crazy. <laughs> oh, come on now, Vivian, please. It is not the end of the world. Vivian, Vivian, please, dear, sit. <laughs> Vivian, for Maud, please sit up. <laughs> sit up, Vivian. That's my <laughs> That's my girl. Okay. Now look, Vivian, you have to pull yourself together. Come on, I'll get you a clean Thank you. Maud, Maud, thank you for taking care of me. Oh, come on, Vivian, you're my friend and I love you. I mean, any woman could have made this mistake. I can certainly empathize with your pain. Dear, dear Vivian. Dear, dear Vivian. I feel so guilty. I feel just like a piece of dirt. <laughs> oh, why didn't I know it wasn't Arthur? Vivian, oh. how could you have known that Arthur had an identical twin brother? Well, I should have suspected something from the minute we were married. In his family album, all of Arthur's baby pictures are cut in half. <laughs> <laughs> How am I ever going to tell Arthur what happened? Oh! Look, Viv, it's not going to be easy. Oh. I mean, this calls for a woman to summon up the courage to sit her husband down, look him straight in the eye, and say nothing. <laughs> I need something to settle my nerves. Could you make me a drink? Of course, honey. What would you like? Scotch? Bourbon? Vodka? Gatorade? Oh, yeah. Walter keeps some in the refrigerator. It makes him feel like a job. <laughs> Vivian, do you want some ice? No, no. I'll just drink it straight. Hey, thought you two would be gone by now. But don't tell you know who about you know what. Every time I walk into the house, I become you know who. 
Walter, Walter, why don't you go and play golf with Stu Dempsey? You said I had to stay home and answer the phone while you were in New York. Oh, Walter, I'm certainly not going to go to New York when someone I love is faced with a big decision. I made my decision. I'm not playing golf. <laughs> not you, Walter. Vivian. I'm getting out of here before the two of you drive me to an insane asylum. He knows. He knows. He knows. Vivian, <laughs> he does not know. Now, honey, that was you. have to pull uh, yourself together. Oh, well, I'm all right. I'm all right. I've decided to tell Arthur the truth. Oh. Uh, that's your decision. Hey, Arthur, you're looking for Vivian. She's in my kitchen. Oh, Arthur's back from the oh, bank. Yeah, yeah, He's but, coming over I, here. I better leave oh, so you can... No, no, you tell him. I want you to tell him. Well, I, I wouldn't know what to say. Oh, just tell him that, 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 that I'm blameless because I thought it was him. Well, Vivian, how am I ever going to get him to believe that? You got me to believe it? <laughs> you tell him to believe it. <laughs> Hello, Arthur. Where's Vivian? Oh, she had to run out for a minute. Listen, Arthur. Vivian has something she wants me to tell you. Oh? Bad news? Not for everyone. <laughs> Sit down, Arthur. What is it, Maud? Um... Look, Arthur, you and I have been friends for a long time. Yeah, very good friends. <laughs> I mean, sure, we've had our fights, but nothing serious. No, we always kiss and make up. <laughs> so I feel that I can speak frankly to you. If there's anybody that can speak frankly to me, it's you, Maud. <laughs> I'm going to be blunt, Arthur. Vivian spent a very romantic night with your twin brother. Now look, Arthur, before you condemn Vivian, I want you to realize this would never have happened if you hadn't been so damn cheap that you, you took a bus back to save a few dollars. I'm not condemning Vivian, Maud. You're not? No. Don't worry, Maud. I love Vivian. And I love you for having the courage to tell me. <laughs> uh, Arthur, I, I never dreamed you'd take it this way. You are quite a man. And you're quite a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Arthur, Vivian is going to be so relieved. I mean, she was so full of shame and guilt. Vivian is so naive and innocent about the ways of the world. She's not mature, like you and me, Maud. <laughs> Arthur, that's so understanding. I guess it takes a crisis like this to bring two friends closer together. <coughs> We've always been close, haven't we, Maud? Never this close. <laughs> oh, now isn't that clumsy of me? And your good sugar bowl, too. I'm sorry. Look, I'd like to pay for that. Will $50 be enough to cover it? You want to pay for something? You're not Arthur! You're crazy Arnold! <laughs> Walter, Arthur's crazy twin brother was here. Arnold? You know about Arnold? Of course. Arthur told me when we were in the army. I found out about Arnold the first night we bunked together. Vivian found out about Arnold almost the same way. <laughs> Walter, please, catch him. Catch him. Come Where'd on. he go? Through the living room. Look, Walter, search the neighborhood. I'll call the bank and see if Arthur is still there. Walter, run, don't jog! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mark. <laughs> Vivian, what were you doing in the den? Oh, just confessing to Arthur. Arthur? <laughs> yes, and oh, he was so forgiving. And forgiving and forgiving. Forgiving. Vivian. 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 I don't know how to tell you this, but you have been in the pod with the wrong pea again. <laughs> He was just getting...
getting in the car. Uh, Walter, I was just getting out of the car. You can't fool me, Arnold. Oh, there you are, animal. <laughs> Cupcake. You hit me. Cupcake? I demand an explanation. Come on out. <laughs> Arnold, so you did come here. Well, you have to go back. You know that, don't you? Now, we all love you, but it's for your own good. I'll take you up to Hartford myself. I'll drive you. Oh, thanks, Walter. Oh, by the way, these are my good friends, Maud and Walter Findlay. Oh, Arnold, you haven't met my wife, Vivian. <laughs> Hello, Vivian. Be polite, Arnold. Shake her hand. <laughs> Come along, Arnold. We have to do it. <laughs> it was nice meeting you, Vivian. My pleasure. Walter, it's just girl talk. Oh, no, it's not just girl talk. I mean, there is a man involved, too. Oh? Who's that? <laughs> Look, Walter, uh, this is just between Vivian and me. It really doesn't concern you at all. Well, it certainly does. Arthur's his best friend. <laughs> <clears throat> Walter, Arthur came home... Maud! You promised! Tell me later. Stu wants me to play golf today, so I thought Mrs. Nogatuck could handle the Templeton calls. Walter, you promised me that you would take the calls on the house for me today. What's wrong with Mrs. Nogatuck? She could use a good laugh. Walter. All right, I'll go tell Stu I can't come out and play. Well, Arthur, why were you ringing the bell? Well, it's not polite to just barge in on a neighbor. How considerate. Hi there. I thought you left for the hospital. Not yet, baby. Well, Walt, Walt, Walter was just over at our house looking for you. Well, I don't always answer the door. I'm kind of a laid-back guy, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Besides, I couldn't go without another taste of those luscious lips. Oh, aren't you adorable? <laughs> well, passion knows no bounds when you're with the goddess of love. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> uh, hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Templeton. Yes, yes, I, I have gotten quite a few calls, but they were, they were all bargains. <laughs> yes, I'm, uh, I'm a standing pad at uh, 48,000. <laughs> What's that you say you have good news? Who? Who bought the place next door? That, that is good news. Yes, I mean, I mean, a Ramada Inn on one side and our Jack in the Box on the other. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, keep you informed. Um, 
Uh, this might interest you. <laughs> Bloomingdale's is running a special on chapstick. <laughs> she didn't care if the whole world looked. Joan of Arc with the Lord to guide her. She was a sister who really could. His adorer was the first bra burner agent that she showed up. The country was falling apart. Betsy Ross got it all sold up. And then there's Maud. 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 That uncompromising, enterprising, anything but tranquilizing. Right on, Maud. Hi, Walter. Hi, Viv. Hi, Maud. Oh, hi, Viv. I'll be ready to go in just a few minutes. Oh, Mart, would you happen to have any... Oh, coffee. <laughs> sure, there's some out on the stove. Help yourself. Oh, thank you, Mart. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> thank you, God. <laughs> Boy, Vivian looks really happy. If you were married to Arthur and he was out of town, you'd look happy too. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Templeton. How are you? That's great. Yeah, yeah. No, I have gotten a number of calls on the house, but nothing I'd insult you with. Yeah, but I, I'm sure there'll be a, a lot more calls this afternoon. I don't want you to worry. No. And I'll be sitting right here with my hand on the phone. Yeah. Bye-bye. Walter, sit right here with your hand on the phone. Oh, come on. Now, Walter, all you have to do is when they call about the house, simply tell them that we're asking $48,000. For the Templeton house on Broadhurst Street? <laughs> That's right. You want me to say you're asking $48,000? American? <laughs> Walter, the Templeton house happens to be in a very expensive neighborhood. The place next door costs $250,000. It's a Ramada Inn. Oh, you should, you should see these sales today at Bloomingdale's. I mean, it's like having a license to steal. Vivian, have you heard from Arthur? He got back from Hartford last night. Is he home now? Arthur, cheap. <laughs> you seem so different all of a sudden. Do I? Yes, of course I do. Look, I just better get this off my chest, Vivian. I didn't tell you why I went away to Hartford, because, well, I was ashamed. Ashamed? What? Ashamed of what? I'm afraid there's a skeleton in my family closet. It's my brother Arnold. Your brother? Well, uh, you never told me you had a brother. I know. I've kept it hidden all these years, Vivian. You see, Arnold is, well, he's not wrapped too tight. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in and out of institutions most of his adult life. Oh, oh, well, Arthur, I would have understood. Thank you, Viv. Oh. Anyway, Arnold's been up in this place at Hartford, and they were having some trouble with him. They asked me to come up there. It's funny, you know, I was always the successful one. He tried to compete, but he just couldn't take the pressure. Oh. Anyway, Vivian, as soon as I got to Hartford, they told me he'd escaped. He'd escaped? That's right, and the authorities thought he might be heading this way and try to impersonate me. I better go to the bank and alert them. Wait a minute, Arthur. Arthur, you mean the two of you look that much alike? Like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. We're identical twins. That's why I took the first bus back from Hartford this morning.
Vivian, I hate to say this, but... <laughs> I think you were tweedling with Tweedledum. <laughs> Oh, come on now, Vivian. Vivian, how were you to know that that, that romantic man who gave you champagne and roses, who, who admired you, who adored you, who showered you with affection, honey, how were you to know that he was Arthur's crazy brother? I wonder why they think he's crazy. Oh, come on now, Vivian, please, it is not the end of the world. Vivian. Vivian, please, dear, sit. <laughs> Vivian, for Maud, please sit up. Sit up, Vivian. That's my girl. That's my girl. Okay. Now, look, Vivian, you have to pull yourself together. I'll tranquilize her right on my Oh, hi, Walter. Hi, Viv. Hi, Maud. Oh, hi, Jim. Hi. <laughs> I'll be ready to go in just a few minutes. Oh, Maud, would you happen to have any... Oh, coffee. <laughs> sure, there's some out on the stove. Help yourself. Oh, thank you, Maud. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> thank you, God. <laughs> Boy, Vivian looks really happy. If you were married to Arthur and he was out of town, you'd look happy too. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Templeton. How are you? That's great. Yeah, yeah. No, I have gotten a number of calls on the house, but nothing I'd insult you with. Yeah, but I, I'm sure there'll be a, a lot more calls this afternoon. I don't want you to worry. No. And I'll be sitting right here with my hand on the phone. Yeah. Bye-bye. Walter, sit right here with your hand on the phone. <laughs> oh, come on. Now, Walter, all you have to do is when they call about the house, simply tell them that we're asking $48,000. For the Templeton house on Broadhurst Street? <laughs> That's right. You want me to say you're asking $48,000? American? <laughs> Walter, the Templeton house happens to be in a very expensive neighborhood. The place next door costs $250,000. It's a Ramada Inn. Oh, you should, you should see these sales today at Bloomingdale's. I mean, it's like having a license to steal. Vivian, have you heard from Arthur? He got back from Hartford last night. <laughs> Is he home now? He's getting ready to leave for the hospital. I'll see if I can catch him. Now, look, Walter, don't stay too long. Oh! <laughs> Vivian, please don't get too comfortable. We don't want to miss that train to New York. Maud... What do you know about Hartford? Hartford? They have a deer up there that sells life insurance. <laughs> I mean, what is there to know about Hartford? When Arthur got home last night, he, he was a different man. Different in what way? Oh, it was as if he saw me with new eyes. Innocent about the ways of the world. She's not mature, like you and me, Maud. <laughs> Arthur, that's... So understanding. I guess it takes a crisis like this to bring two friends closer together. <coughs> We've always been close, haven't we, Maud? Never this close. <laughs> oh, now isn't that clumsy of me? And your good sugar bowl, too. I'm sorry. Look, I'd like to pay for that. Will $50 be enough to cover it? You want to... Pay for some? You're not Arthur, you're crazy Arnold! <laughs> What's the matter? Walter, 
Arthur's crazy twin brother was here. Arnold? You know about Arnold? Of course. Arthur told me when we were in the army. I found out about Arnold the first night we bunked together. Vivian found out about Arnold almost the same way. <laughs> Walter, please, catch him, catch him. Come Where'd on. he go? Through the living room. Look, Walter, search the neighborhood. I'll call the bank and see if Arthur is still there. Walter, run, don't jog. Hello, Mark. Vivian, what were you doing in the den? Oh, just confessing to Arthur. Arthur? <laughs> yes, and oh, he was so forgiving. And forgiving and forgiving. Forgiving. Vivian. Vivian. I don't know how to tell you this, but you have been in the pod with the wrong pea again. What? I got him, Claude. I got him. He was just getting in the car. Uh, Walter, I was just getting out of the car. You can't fool me, Arnold. Oh, there you are, animal. <laughs> Cupcake, you hit me. Cupcake? I demand an explanation. Come on out. So you did come here. Well, you have to go back. You know that, don't you? Now, we all love you, but it's for your own good. I'll take you up to Hartford myself. I'll drive you. Oh, thanks, Walter. Oh, by the way, these are my good friends, Maud and Walter Findlay. Oh, Arnold, you haven't met my wife, Vivian. <laughs> Hello, Vivian. 